Fatiguing is probably the best word. I'm tired. <laughs> Does anything give me another one where you're like, I need to throw up? No, I usually do that before the game, not after. <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously, Caleb, I mean, first on him, that's a guy who was here through all the mess. I mean, he was here when all the bad things were happening. He was here, the three and nine. Then I show up and tell him, just stay, just stay. He's here again, we're three and nine, we suck again, right? And then we're like, just stay, just stay, believe. He's one of the few people that stayed. And for him to make that play is awesome. I mean, kudos to him, we gave him a game ball. And then uh, the defensive performance, just unbelievable the way they stepped up, specifically in the first half in the running game. Uh, first half in the running game, I don't know this exactly the statistics, but we held them uh, to, I believe, 3.6 yards of carry other than their 120-yard run that they had, uh, which is unbelievable. And then uh, they got us on a few darts in the second half, tackle pulls, but a uh, good scheme by them. But Caleb, just the definition of uh, really what this team is, and that's just continuing to fight, not getting rattled, and finding a way. Yeah, I think the biggest thing this today is, you know, when you look at the rushing statistics, you know, we ran the ball decent, right? And we stopped the run decent versus, versus a program, not a team, a program that that's their identity. And uh, this, I mean, I would love to say this one win puts us on that level and gives us that consistency, but it doesn't, right? It just shows that we're in the right direction, it shows that we're trending in the right direction. It shows that what we're doing uh, is working. Right, but it takes a lot of commitment. Uh, it takes an entire organization in order to. Sorry, you okay? Okay. It takes an entire organization in order to build what they built. And uh, I know with Graham, I know with uh, the new leadership that we're going to be a program that can sustain this, and that they're investing. They're invested in investing into our strength staff, invested into our recruiting staff, investing into our assistant coaches' salaries, that they've made guarantees to me that they're going to invest to make this one of the best programs in the country. And I think we have one of the best staffs in the country, so I'm excited to try to create some continuity here. Yeah, chaos, absolute chaos. I mean, all of a sudden I was shaking Coach's hand and then there was, you know, thousands of people on the field swarming around us. And uh, it was awesome, though. That's what college sports is about. That's what Activating the Valley is about. That's what's coming to a college is about. You go to a school, that way you can remember moments like this. You know, you, yeah, you go to school and you get your education and you go in the real world, but you remember moments like this, not just our players, but the fans, the students, they remember these moments. And I think uh, that's the fun part about college football is you get to create memories, not just for your team, but for, at Arizona State at least, 80,000 people, 100,000 people at a time uh, that are student at, students here. Uh, and that's pretty cool. He was playing well. He was in a rhythm. Bottom line, he deserved it. So uh, playing well in a rhythm, deserved it. And guess what? Game was on the line. He uh, closed it out. Yeah, our defense played really, really well, especially after turnovers, especially in the low red zone. I mean, we talked about if you want to beat Utah, you have to win the margins, right? They're a team they usually shorten the game, right? They limit games to nine possessions. They get you frustrated because you're on the sideline on offense. So in order to prevent that, you have to run the ball, you have to win the turnover battle, and you have to win the margins. And what are the margins? The margins are the middle eight. The margins are low red zone. The margins are third and fourth down. Right, you got to win those margins if you want to beat Utah, and uh, we won the margins when it comes to low red zone, and that was really the difference in the football game was that margin. And uh, kudos to our guys, that was been an Achilles heel for, heel for us going into the bye week. Uh, we made an emphasis to get better at it. We pointed it out. 
We worked it in the bye, and we've been better at it uh, since we've come out of the bye. And uh, all about the guys, this this team, this is all – I mean, I don't even give pregame speeches, guys. Our own guys give pregame speeches. Think about that. I leave, and I stay, they talk. Because it's not about the coaches, it's about these guys. Yeah, it's not about me. It's about the leaders. Those leaders do a phenomenal job setting the tone. Like I told them, we're only going to be a team as good as our leadership, as good as the how hard our players, our best players play. In my first meeting, that's what I said. I said, uh, are you, everybody, who thinks they're a good player? Who thinks you're one of our best players? Well, we're only going to play as hard as you play. So if you raised your hand, then you just put yourself in a higher pedestal. And if you think you're a leader, if you think you're one of our better players, then you have to play harder than everybody else because you're now the standard. So uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And with those guys, uh, I think they're setting the standard high. And uh, hopefully they're setting the standard for the, the young guys in our program. So this becomes uh, the standard. And uh, hopefully the standard continue to raise us, which is how hard we play. And we're still getting too many uh, you know, penalties, passionate penalties. But like I told them, like – uh, I'd much rather teach a dog who bites to put him back in the cage than try to teach a dog who barks how to bite. And uh, if our guys get physical penalties, you know, and we get violent penalties, uh, you know, we're going to try to coach that and get that toned down. But a big reason we're winning football games is because we play hard, we play with passion, and uh, we're, I, I want guys who, who bite, not guys who bark. And uh, we got to teach them how to bite a little less. But uh, – it's definitely easier to teach them that than how to bite. And uh, with that, you know, we were picked to win four games this year. So a lot of Sun Devil fans obviously picked the over in Vegas, right? For those of you guys who won, put that money back into the collective, right? <laughs> because, because you get to celebrate these wins. You get to have another cold one with your friends. You get to have great Saturday nights. That should be enough for you already. Take that money that you've won. Put it back into these kids. Put it back into that collective, right? And uh, let's enjoy the rest of the year. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, that was back, and we go for a fourth down with. Nine minutes left because our best player as a running back says, give me the ball. So we're going to give him the ball. I mean, like I said, this is their team, not mine. It's theirs. And if our best player, the guy who's one of our best guys, wants the ball, we're going to give it to him. Bottom line. And we got stuffed. And guess what our defense did? We stopped him. They had his back. And then guess what we did? We got it back, and he finished it. And then Caleb finished it. And it's like it was just that what you just described is the definition of a team. And uh, we, we were that tonight. Hi. Uh, so with Sam going down, what was that like from your perspective? And then obviously still able to finish that drive, but then eventually getting him back. What was it like making those adjustments on the fly and being ready? Yeah, we have a lot of confidence in Jeff. I mean, we really did. I mean, put him in there, we put the ball in his hands, and he goes and scores a touchdown. And then we go in there the next drive. And uh, second down, first down, we call a run. Doesn't really go anywhere. Second down, we call a pass. If I'm remembering correctly, uh, he, he throws a little snag route uh, to the single receiver. That was a good ball, good read, right? We get stopped a little bit short. Third down, we, uh, or we get a first down, and then, then they get us to get, get off the field. But it wasn't due to him. He went in there and executed the calls. And uh, kudos to him for being ready. He's a veteran. Uh, he's a guy who, in today's day and age of football, transferred here not to be the number two. He transferred here to start. And there's a... a you know, there's great power in, in what it means to the football team that you have a guy who's a senior who transferred here to start uh, to win the job, and he didn't. And he's a great teammate. He's a great person. And he goes in there and he gets the job done uh, when he was called upon. And uh, that's, that's the culture we're trying to build, and that's the program we're trying to build. And I think he, that what he did tonight and how he's handled himself uh, just tells you everything you need to know about him.
Huge. Explosive plays, especially versus Utah. Teams that don't give up explosive runs. Uh, that's their MO. They don't give up explosive plays. But it all works together. You know, the O-line played great. Uh, Cam's hard to bring down. The quarterback running game and, and the moving of the pockets, we called a good game with the quick games. Uh, mixed in there and the jet sweeps. Uh, but it's just critical. You have to have explosive plays to win football games. You know, it's actually talk about the, the margins. Explosive play rate is the second highest statistic that correlates to wins behind turnovers in college football of the major statistics. Uh, they're harder to, like, measure. Like, everybody wants explosive plays, right? So it's a little bit different. Uh, you don't – I don't quantify them as, as important because everybody wants them all the time. But uh, they are definitely a direct correlation to winning, and we had those – uh, when it mattered most. And the one thing that's awesome for our guys is we're playing our best football in the fourth quarter. You know, and I think that's a testament to we talk about our workload in practice and how people think we're crazy because we put up 570 workloads uh, week six and we're putting up back-to-back -back 570 workloads on a Tuesday, Wednesday practice uh, on week four last week or week five last week, I'm sorry. And uh, people are like, golly, golly. But then in the fourth quarter of two games, right, we find a way. And uh, that's a kudos to the guys believing in the work because a lot of people could be calling their buddies and saying, they ain't doing this. Why are we doing this? And our guys are just bought in and they believe in the process. Uh, on what situation? Oh, to go up nine or eight? Yeah, definitely go up eight. Oh, only from a only from a perspective of, you never want to put yourself in position, in my opinion, to lose, right? So if you go for two and don't get it, you're exposing yourself to potentially losing. Whereas if you're up eight, you're still one. Depending on when they score, you may have another possession, right? If they were to score fast and you can't lose, right? So the combination there, uh, I think, was not, not really a, a debate for me. Yeah, I wish I could say it's like, oh, great coaching. It's not. Uh, it's these guys' belief. It's these guys, the work that they've put in uh, all off season. It's the work they put in throughout the week. Uh, like I said, this is, I mean, I, I get to stand up here and people get to say dilly and all the cool things and right. And, but this is really all about our players. Uh, they're the ones who have changed this place. They're the ones who are putting in the work. They're the ones that believe, and uh, it's all about them. Uh, well, I saw not targeting, and then what went through my what went through my head was I can't believe that was targeting. But you got to remember, uh, targeting is always reviewed up top. So anything that's close, you're going to throw the flag because it's always reviewed. So just because somebody throws a flag for targeting doesn't even mean they really believe it's targeting. It just means they want to, them to slow the game down to look at it because they didn't call roughing the passer and targeting. If they would have called roughing the passer and targeting, then even if the targeting was taken off, there still would have been assessed the roughing the passer, the 15-yard penalty. So they didn't feel like it was a violent, a violent penalty. They just felt like there was a chance that his head made contact in the head or neck area. So uh, sometimes they throw those flags almost to guarantee reviews, to just like alert people, let's review this and take a peek at it because it was close. So yeah, it's hard when it's like reverse, they call it and you're like going crazy and you're like, that's not targeting. And they're like, well, we're going to review it. And then it wasn't, of course. But what was going through my head was, no way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, last year we were, you know, a great day was about 5'10". Uh, 520. The average in when we got into the Tuesdays uh, midseason were about low force uh, because we lost so many guys. So uh, very hard to to practice at a high rate. So we're about. I mean, somebody do the math. Quick math. They're 25, 30 percent higher 
workload per day, which is a fourth quarter uh, worth of workload more a day. Uh, and to compare it, I compare it to, you know, that's how Oregon practices, that's, which is, means that's how Georgia practices, which means that's how Alabama used to practice, you know. And, uh, you know, it's hard to do that when, you're, when you don't have the depth. And uh, we're building the depth and we're building the toughness to be able to do that. Now you got to be able to balance that. And, you know, we're half through the year, so we have to be able to pull back a little bit. And uh, the fact that our guys on a short week, six days rest, versus a team that's on a bye, who gets their starting quarterback back, who we don't get two full days of practice, can go out and do what they did and find a way to win with every single odd stacked against them is unbelievable. And it shows me that we can take a little bit off these guys, that they can be focused. And uh, maybe we go from one of those workload days or two of those workload days down to one here, these last uh, six games to try to keep these guys fresh. Yeah, last year's Utah game was interesting, uh, to say the least. Uh, definitely was uh, was not fun uh, by any means, but uh, just testament once again to our guys in terms of like just putting in the work. I mean, you can't shortcut it. The work is the work. Like, there's not a secret potion or a secret formula to have success. It's if you want to achieve something, you have to care about it and you have to put in the work. And uh, our guys have done that from winter when uh, to spring to summer when they thought they were getting an NCAA video game early, right? They still did it. <laughs> and even though people thought it was evil when we did it, uh, but it's, it's all about the work. And it'll always be all about the work, all about the work. And these guys are all about the work. <laughs> coaches challenge their number one guy. Yeah. What did you say? Yeah, well, I always challenge Scott. Scott needs to be challenged. That's his personality. If you let him get comfortable, uh, people, in my opinion, people, he's always been one of the better players on your team. And uh, most people coach their – they say they coach their best players the hardest, but you don't. Most people don't coach their best players the hardest. So, you know, he wasn't on a kickoff. Uh, he's been on kickoff for us, and he wasn't on kickoff when we took kickoff. And I said, what happened? Like, you wonder why are we fallen off? It's because our mindset's changed. Why aren't you on kickoff? Like, that's who we are. Same thing I said last week, and I challenged them, and then I challenged them again this week that, you know, these are the games that people are going to watch. And, uh, and he rose to the challenge. And in terms of, you know, what do I think the one thing is, uh, I couldn't tell you, uh, recruit good kids. Like, we're, we're very big on recruiting people who fit us, like, the rankings are awesome, and uh, they do matter. Like, don't, don't let anybody get you wrong. Like, there's some, some stats behind that. But more importantly than that is you get the right guy. You get people who love football. You get people who are good people. You don't lie to people in the recruiting process. So when they are here, it's not a, oh, I tricked them here. They're like, no, this is what I told you. I told you we were going to work. Like, here you go, Sam. I told you you would have a chance to win the job. You won it. Congrats. Like, take that times 120. Like, it's, you know, people think because I'm young, I'm going to relate and play video games, and that's good, which I am, by the way. But, uh, but at the end of the day, it's about honest conversations with people. And uh, in the recruiting process, it's about telling people the truth, not what they want to hear. And I truly believe when you do that, you're going to get the right people in your program, not the people that want to be told things, want to be told how great they are. You get the people that want to be challenged. And I think uh, that's one thing our staff does a really good job of is we bring the right people to this program, and hopefully we continue to do that. The people that are passionate about the game are passionate about people, the people that are good, a good person, that make good decisions and have a lot of fun working harder than anybody in the country.
Yeah, I mean, he's – Caleb's one of my favorite kids on the team because – he just does everything you ask over and over and over again. He, he's in the best shape of his life right now. Uh, he's bigger than he's ever been. He's faster than he's ever been. Uh, and he's playing better football than he's ever played. And uh, like I said, he's – talk about a dude who just persevered, persevered, persevered through it all, right? He was here for the lowest of the lows. And uh, he kept fighting, kept fighting. He didn't leave. Uh, and uh, he kept fighting because he wanted to be a Sun Devil. And uh, for him to make this play uh, is just unbelievable for him. And it's going to be something he remembers forever. And it's a great lesson for him and for people that he persevered through something. He overcame the odds. He kept fighting. And uh, his time came. And when his time came, he got the job done. Yeah, I mean, the people telling us how good we are, I mean, they do such a great job that they picked us last. So, I mean, they obviously must be right. They must be right. We must listen to everything they say and take it as the absolute truth, right? And, uh, but it's, it's not about anything else. It's about us. Like, it's about us. It's about us. And uh, we'll probably go in there. You know, we have Saturday and Sunday that are voluntary for them. Uh, and then we'll get back on a normal just because the, the week, it's, we can't technically bring them in, NCAA rules. So uh, Monday we'll bring them in, and uh, we'll probably tell them all the bad things we did, right, all the things we got to get better at. And uh, we got to go on the road at Cincinnati, kick off at 9 a.m., right, which is a great challenge. And uh, like I said last week in my press conference, there are no upsets in this league. Like this league, I think the, the spread – the average spread in this league this week was like three and a half. Three and a half. Every day is a dogfight. And it's all about the teams who can mentally flush it and get right back to the main thing. And the main thing is just your thing. Just do it again and do it again and do it again. And uh, that's the challenge and that's going to be the message. How are the Olympics? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's a program. You know, that was a team. Uh, you could see their quarterback wasn't fully healthy. You know, he was battling. He was fighting. Uh, but that was a team that is a, a program. And uh, like I said earlier, we hopefully, you know, we can build ourselves to be that program, not a team. Right, right now we're a team working to build a program. And a program is not just a football coach. Uh, it's an athletic director. It's a president. It's a strength staff. It's a off the field staff, it's a recruiting staff, it's the commitment to keep the people in the building for a long period of time. And that's what Utah did from top to bottom as an organization. They kept people that were passionate about Utah in the building, right? They kept the continuity. And that's what the program's about. And that's what we have to do here. And I have full belief we're gonna do that. And uh, my me message to Coach Whittingham was, hey, when you, it was before the game, you know, after the game, we just shook hands, you know, congratulations. But it was, hey, I want to pick your brain whenever you choose to retire. I want you to come out to practice. I want you to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what we can do better. Uh, and I want you to coach me because, uh, like I said, the success he's had over a long period of time speaks for itself. And one game doesn't define that or his program. And I have the utmost, us, utmost respect for that program. He said, congratulations, you guys are playing your butt off. <laughs> oh, to that question? Yeah, sorry, that was that. before he goes, oh, of course. So, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see him come and do, uh, help us out, like, tomorrow. You know, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, local guys, I mean, that's on them. I don't know. We're going to recruit really good players here. There's a lot of really good players who want to be here. And uh, I'm from here. I'm born and raised here. I would love for these local guys who are committed elsewhere to come here. But at the end of the day, we're going to win here. And you're either going to be a part of it or you're not. And you're either going to be like Jake Smith and you're going to be able to run off that field and go see your family after the game. And you're either going to be able to accomplish something in your own state that you can be proud of or you're not. And uh, I'm worried about getting people here that are passionate to be Sun Devils. Passionate to be Sun Devils, whether that means they're from California, Hawaii, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Florida. I don't care. I want people who are passionate that when they show up campus, they say, dang, this is awesome. Like, this place is awesome. And I felt that growing up. So I know there's kids out there right now that are committed to bigger programs, uh, that are committed to cooler programs, the programs that have won longer and we haven't won yet. Uh, but at the same token, uh, the challenge is we're going to go sign good players here. And I'm not going to chase the guys here. The guys here, the best players in this state, if they want to be a part of this, they have that opportunity. Uh, but we're going to sign really good players, and I hope it's the kids in the state. But at the end of the day, that's on them. Well, we have one of the best student sections in uh, college football. It's because we have one of the biggest universities in college football. And that's our power. Our power here at Arizona State is with numbers. Our power is with the, ma the, the amount of people that should be invested in this place is our greatest strength. And uh, we got to really tap into that. If you're a person who's an alumni, uh, you know, s send our game to somebody, our score, right? That's also an alumni that's disconnected. We have to reconnect everybody who was once connected to this place. We have to reconnect them because the power in this school, the power in this city is in numbers. And if we can unite, if we can come together, this can not just be one of the, this can be one of the best environments in college football, but we can do something here that people have thought should be done for a long time. Uh, we can get it accomplished. It's going to take some time. It's not going to happen overnight. There's going to be more failures this year There's gonna, uh, than people want, but that's part of the build. But that, Fans, those, that crowd is unbelievable. One thing I will say is when we're on offense, we don't need to cheer. When we're on defense, we need to cheer really loud, right? So uh, I, I'm going to get with our, uh, our crew. We're going to have to put up some, some signs to, to get this cheering thing rocking, right, for, uh, for the fans. No, I don't know if he has a hardball type quote, but uh, but no, it's awesome. I mean, that's why you come home. That's why uh, we, myself, my wife, always Bree always dreamt of being here, being the head coach here. I mean, we're we're moving into a a house that's three doors down from them, and the back fence is connected to my sister. Uh, so when uh, and then her parents live four miles or four minutes away, and my other brother lives twelve minutes from there. So uh, I'm really excited for somebody to negatively recruit. Uh, against us and, and staff continuity. Same exact message, same thing I told everybody on Monday. We're not, we're playing Utah, bottom line. Uh, but more, more importantly, uh, you know, uh, does, has anybody noticed who's been on the sideline for us, a famous former quarterback? Anybody notice? One of the best quarterbacks in the history of Arizona State. Not Jake Plummer, Danny White. He, I meet with him every Sunday night, and he goes through the future opponent uh, with me. You know, he's a great Sun Devil, and he wanted to give back to the program, so we got him involved, because why would you not let him be involved, right? You'd be a fool to not. And uh, the, he usually gives, you know, the keys to victory, and his key to victory quote at the end was, we have met the, the enemy, and he is us. And uh, that's what I told the team, is it's all about us.